gentlemen, and welcome to the theater this morning. We have for you this beautiful presentation of the off-limits areas of the ship presented by the captain and the officers present here this morning. Remember, at the end of the presentation, if you have any technical question, just raise your hand and we'll be closer to you with the microphone. So, please, welcome on the stage, ladies and gentlemen, the master, Roberto Leota, the master of the MSCC side, the hotel director, Yanis, the SMB director, food and beverage, Director Thomas, Executive Chef Hector, and Chief Housekeeper Raúl. Señor Signori, a la fin de la presentación, si hay que la manda, soltanto alzate la mano. Señor Señor, a la final de la presentación, si tienen alguna pregunta, solamente levanten la mano. Y vean, si me decía la fondo de la presentación, se busca ver de cuestión, le de una mente. Please, Captain. Good morning, everybody. Have you enjoyed your cruises so far? Yes. Good, soon you are going to see San Juan. Well, the reason why we are here today is uh, to show you some pictures, some slides of areas that are, not, that are closed to our guests, and not only to our guests, but also to those crew members that are not authorized or qualified to go in those areas. Main one is the navigational bridge, then there will be some pictures of the engine and then also of the FMB area, the kitchens and uh, hotel areas. Reason why this area closed, of course, everything goes back to September 11. Because September 11 changed the world and our life forever. So now those areas are restricted areas for security reason, and nobody has access. So, let me start with some basic information about our vessel. The beautiful seaside was delivered on November 29th. So this group, this cruise is going to be the first birthday of our vessel. She is going to be one year old. We fly Malta flag. The gross tonnage of the ship is 153,516 tons. It's a pretty a big ship. Our length overall is 323 meters, equivalent to 1,061 feet. The breadth is 41 meters, equivalent to 134 feet. And the maximum draft, when we are full loaded, is 8 point eight meters equivalent to almost twenty nine feet. Ma our maximum speed when we are full add on to is twenty two knots equivalent to twenty five point three miles per hour and we burn an average of two hundred and seventy metric tons of fuel per day which means uh, 82,938 gallons per day. It's a big amount of fuel. Fresh water, our consumption is 1,300 metric tons per day, equivalent to 343,400 gallons. And uh, we produce the fresh waters ourselves. We don't load the fresh water in any other port. We produce ourselves because it's much uh, safer and better quality water. Other information, maximum guest capacity is uh, 5,179, and maximum crew members capacity is 1,413. We have a total of 2,066 guest cabins, and a total of 759 cabins for our crew members. We have four diesel generators, producing a total of 62,400 kilowatts of power, equivalent to 83,680 horsepower. Now I will show you some pictures. This is the navigation bridge and this is my team up there on the bridge, all the navigation officers, the one that drive the ship while I am here and while I am around the ship. <coughs> 
this is a view of the central console from where the officers drive the ship. On the bridge we have always uh, three persons. There are two officers, is a watch leader and a junior officer, plus an helmsman to uh, the act to look out when we are on autopilot. So there are always three persons and they monitor the navigation from all these equipment. Now I will show you a close-up of the ACDIS and the radar screens. We have always one navigator at this station and the co-navigator at this station. We work like on the airplanes where there is a pilot and co-pilot. We have always one navigator and the co-navigator. They work on a shift of four hours on and eight hours off. So the first uh, shift starts at midnight, they do midnight to four, then there is the second one from four to eight, and then the third one from eight until noon. And then they start all over again, noon to four, four to eight, eight to midnight. So you can see the radar screen, the electronic chart, the this here we have a control of the engines, these are the engines levers, and uh, this is uh, a close-out of the electronic chart. Specifically, this was the ship berthed in Cozumel, so you can see the track the ship was following. And uh, here on this side, the navigators have available all the navigational information. They have the heading, the speed over the ground, the speed through the water, and the wind, the current, all the information that are necessary for us to maneuver, to maneuver the ship safely. This is a close-up of the steering gear console. You can see the small wheel. This wheel now at the, the wheel nowadays is very small. We don't have any more the big wheel on the bridge. The ship is provided with the two rudders, and you can see here the indicators. And this one is a repeater of the gyro compass so that uh, the helmsman can keep a steady heading when we give an order. And this is uh, the bridge wing, the console that we have on the side of the bridge. We, when we are docking or undocking the ship, we move from the central console to the side of the console that we call the bridge wing. And here I have a control of the engines, control of the thrusters, the mini wheel, for the rudders, we don't even have a wheel anymore on the wing, it's just a mini wheel, which makes our life much easier. Here I have the camera for seeing the side of the vessel, and here there is a repeater of the electronic chart and other information that I need while I have a docking or undocking the vessel. This is the echograph they show us that the depth of the water below the keel, we call it under keel clearance, at all time, it is always on. And uh, these are the GPS, we have two GPS, because if one fails, we have always another one available. And all the equipment that we have on the bridge is redundant, we have a double, so that if one piece of equipment fails, we have always a backup in place. Despite uh, we use electronic chart and we do electronic navigation, we still have uh, some tools uh, to maintain the traditional navigational system, like the bearing finder to take bearing of uh, Cospicus Point in the land, in the coast, and we still have our sextant to observe the sun and the stars. We don't use, we use that not even anymore as backup, we just use that to keep the tradition alive with our new officers, the new generation of officers, so this is not going to be forgotten. And on the bridge we have also the radio station, so nowadays uh, radio, the radio equipment is very small, it's not like in the old days when there was the radio room and the radio officer. We still have the radio officer actually, but the equipment now is much, much uh, smaller and very easy to use with all the satellite uh, system. This is a picture of the safety center. This is just uh, adjacent to the bridge 
From here, we have the control of all the fire detection system, all the smoke detectors, heat detectors, flame detectors, manual call point. And uh, we have a control of all the watertight doors that are down or below the bulkhead deck, the section of the hull that is uh, below the water. The ship is divided in uh, watertight compartments and when we are at sea, the watertight doors have to be always uh, closed and we monitor them from the bridge because we have the indication lights. We have also adjacent to the bridge the CCTV control room where there is a security officer that uh, controls the, all the cameras uh, 24 7. On board the ship we have uh, about 1,500 cameras. We overview everything. Not because we want to spy the people around, but just because if something happens we can carry out uh, a proper investigation. Now some technical information. This is a picture of the bow thrusters. The ship is equipped with the four bow thrusters. Thrusters gives a side-to-side -side motion to the ship. They do the job that in the old days were done by the tugboats. Now we don't use the tugboats anymore. We do it ourselves with the bow and the stem thrusters. We have the <coughs> We have four bow thrusters and we have three stand thrusters, plus more we have two propellers and two rudders. This is a picture of the stand thrusters. You can see the three of them here. This is the propeller. This is the shaft of the propeller. And behind the propeller there is the rudders. We have one propeller on each side and one rudder on each side. This is the propeller with the six blades. The diameter of the propeller is about is 6.1 meters, which is equivalent to approximately 21 feet. And this is one of the rudder, this is the port rudder. The rudder, the angle that can be moved is 35 degrees, but this is a special rudder that has also this flap on the back. It's called the Becker rudder because the flap can have an inclination up to 75 degrees which increase the lift of the rudders and make the ship turning quicker, turning faster. This is a picture of the bulbous bow that is exactly on the forward of the ship, just below the bow. You can see it when you, when you walk nearby the ship. The bulbous bow is a for increasing the hydrodynamic of the vessel, so make the ship sliding better into the water, increasing the speed and increasing the fuel efficiency. And this is one of our stabilizers fin. The stabilizer fin will deploy them when the sea is rough or when we have a swell from our back, from our quarter. It is the case uh, today and also yesterday, now they are deployed. They are about 15 feet long and uh, once we deploy them, they move and they counteract the rolling period of the vessel, maintaining the ship very stable and that is going to make our life more comfortable and also safer. This is a picture of all our life-saving appliances. And the ship is equipped with 12 lifeboats like this one, which capacity is 314 persons. Then we have four tender boats that can be used also to abandon the ship as a life-saving appliances. Maximum capacity is 267 persons. Then we have two small rescue boats. We use them in case we have to rescue somebody in, in the water and they can be used also for life-saving appliances with the capacity of 60 persons. Plus we have 10 life rafts of 35 person each and we have a very modern system that is called MES, M -E -S, which stands for Marine Evacuation System. Consists of four huge rafts for a maximum capacity, we have one system on each side, 
maximum capacity of 833 persons, and this is for the crew members. Crew members, they jump in into this chute, and they will go down, and they will go inside the raft. From the first one, they will go to the others, and uh, very, very quickly, we can evacuate 833 persons. And that chute is, uh, is not really straight, it's like turning inside so that the person inside, they, they cannot get their high speed. They go down slowly, slowly and comfortably. And that was enough from the deck side. Now we will see a few slides of the engine room. Down in the engine room, a chief engineer is responsible, is in command at the engine room. The chief engineer is also responsible for all the technical services on board. And he is assisted by 19 engineers, 19 engine officers, 20 in between various technicians, electricians, refrigeration engineers and plumbers. And plus there are 12 wipers and oilers for a total of 51 persons that work constantly down there or around the ships to resolve any technical issue. This is a picture of the engine control room from where the engine officer of the watch monitor all the condition of the engine, the propulsion motor, diesel generator and everything. This is still the engine control room. And this is a picture from the top of the diesel generators. We have the four diesel generators, two big one of 14 megawatts and two smaller of 12 megawatts. This is another picture of the generator. Still, this is a side view of the generator. And here, this is one of the propulsion motors. Propulsion motors are electric. We have electrical propulsion motor. The ship is called diesel electric because we have a diesel generator that produces the power for the propulsion motors that are electric and they make the propeller shaft rotating and they give motion to the vessel. This is a picture of the air conditioning room where we have a very big compressor to produce enough air conditioning for the entire vessel. This is one of the seawater treatments, specifically this is an evaporator. The evaporator uses all the heat waste of the engines to produce fresh water. It is a very long process but those big heats of the engine, instead of being wasted into the water, is uh, utilized to produce uh, fresh water. And uh, plus more, we have another system to produce uh, uh, fresh water that is called uh, the osmosis. So we have the two. And in total, we are capable to produce more than 2,000 tons of fresh water per day. Our need is 1,300 tons, so we are capable of producing much more water than what we need. For this reason, we never bunker fresh water outside. We are MSC family. We are very proud for coming from more than 60 different countries. We come from all the continents, from all over the world, and we get along much better than what the United Nations do. <laughs> so we are very, very proud about it. And now is the turn of our hotel director. Thank you, Captain. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome up. Oh, that's my secret. Welcome to this uh, question and answer session. Uh, <laughs> laughing with my shopping list. It's okay, every Miami I go to supermarket. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a brief synopsis of uh, what we're purchasing. Uh, so, for a week, uh, as a consumption, we have uh, 44,000 eggs, 
24,000 libras of poultry, 28,000 uh, fish, 22,000 meat, 66,000 fruits, then uh, vegetables, 15,000. What is happening? I don't understand. I think we have some <laughs> naughty kids here, but they do not. But anyway, I'm the same, so don't worry about it. Then salads. <laughs> We we'll go to 48,000, potatoes 22,000, rice 15,500, and flour 33,000. This is a typical shopping list for a, the week's consumption, both for guests and our crew. Now, moving forward, what we have? We have, well, that's sabotage, but we will fix it. We have 10 big galleys. It doesn't want to stay, but it's okay. Which cater to 4,500 crew, plus uh, four and a half thousand guests plus 15,000 crew. Uh, there are two floors on decks five and six that we have the complimentary restaurants. Uh, plating minimum of 18,000 plates per day for all meal periods. Now, in terms of the bars, we have 17 bars, nine dining venues, and then, as you say, how fast you can be, uh, <laughs> in the buffet, we are serving uh, every person, it says on the buffet, uh, visits the buffet around three times a day. Now, before my secrets disappear again, just so you can see, there is 17,000 bottles of beer consumed on a weekly basis. So, moving a little bit forward, we'll give you some slides from our bakery. But now that you want to move, it doesn't move, you see? <laughs> I think somebody is doing me a stress test this morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're moving forward. Uh, bakery, small fridge, typical like what we have at home. Nothing more than that. Then we have housekeeping. Raul and his team consisting of 245 uh, cabin stewards, including your favorite uh, cabin steward. Uh, as in total on the ship, we have 2,066 staterooms out of which 1,314 are balcony cabins. Uh, part of the kingdom of Raoul, which is our chief housekeeper, we have the, chief, the ship's laundry, 24-hour operation, managed by 28 crew members, which on a daily basis, they, they wash 2,500 uh, bed seats, approximately, and that amount goes the double, almost double, on an turnaround or embarkation day. Uh, also part of the duties of the housekeeping team is to keep all the public areas clean, plus uh, the theater and all the other locations visited by the guests on a daily basis. And with that, the sabotage is finished. So <laughs> now we are all yours. Uh, any questions you have, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question for the, the ship, the hotel, the food and beverage, housekeeping, here we are for you. Just raise your hand and we'll be closer to you with the microphone. Okay, Captain, right here, please. When the seas are causing the ship to pitch, do the stabilizers also counteract that motion? No, that is a good question. For pitching, there is nothing we can do. Right. Stabilizers up the lot when the ship is rolling. Passenger ships, they roll when the swell are coming from above the beam, which is the case today. We have, a, we have a north northeast swell is exactly on our port quarter, and without stabilizer, believe me, it was going to be extremely uncomfortable because we could have rolled about two degrees on one side and two degrees on the other side all day long, and that was going to be sort of a nightmare. Thank you. What kind of training do crew need in order to be on the bridge and how long does that training take and secondly how many people are on the ship right now for passengers so one was about that so to become a deck officer you have to start to go at the nautical school which in Italy last about five years. No, but it's five years, it's a five year school. Once you finish the school, you have, we have to start working on the ship and accumulate sea time experience. After 
12 months of sea time experience, we start as a deck cadet or engine cadet. We have the same career path. Cadet, the cadet ship is 12 months, then we have stop studying again, go through a process of certification and do courses, specific courses to become third officer. Then uh, you need uh, more sea time experience uh, to uh, do the examination to become a chief mate and become a second officer, so you have to do another examination. Then you have to accumulate more sea time experience to become a first officer. And then after at least one year at sea as a first officer, we can do the examination for the master license. And with that license, we can become a safety officer, staff captain, and then according to the company need, and also according to the evaluation, because uh, we must have a good evaluation, eventually the company can promote uh, captain. So it is a very, very long process, and it, on cruise ship, requires in, be in between 15 to 20 years to become a captain. Any more questions? Where does the food supply come from and how do you get it physically to the ship? So, um, good morning everyone. Everything is coming the very first day of the cruise in Miami. And uh, that mo during that morning, uh, we will have the Provision Master Inventory Compliance Officer and one of uh, my assistants or myself checking especially the fresh product to, in order to make sure that the quality is what we expect because we want to give you the best. Okay, right here please. So I wrote the zip line yesterday and got me thinking about this one. Uh, how tall is the funnel? How tall is the funnel? From the sea level, from the sea level is about 65 meters. From the from the keel is almost 75 because there is the portion of the ship that is submerged. So the, we call that uh, air draft. The air draft, yes, is a 65 meters. Captain here. Hi, Captain. We know salt water causes corrosion. When the ship is plugged in at Miami, how often do you have to replace the electrical tons and bring the power to the ship? The salt water definitely generates the corrosion, but the, 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 the hull of the ship has a special coating that is called anti-fooling anti that protects the hull from the corrosion until uh, we renew it. We go in, uh, in, in dry dock once every five years, so we are well protected for five years, then we need to go to the shipyard, dry dock, get out of the water, and uh, renew everything underneath. The second question? Muchas gracias. Hablo muy mal el, el inglés, así que me va a permitir hablar en español. Espero que me puedan traducir. Eh, es, todos esos datos están muy interesantes de cuánto comemos, qué hacemos, en fin. Pero como somos tantos, producimos basura. Yo quisiera saber cuál es el procedimiento para el tratamiento de esas basuras. Ah, sí, 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 he entendido. Producimos muchísima basura. Uh, uh, so the lady is asking... Uh, uh, we, we, we have so much food and so much products on board, so for sure we produce a lot of garbage, a lot of waste, and that, that is correct. El, el procedimiento es muy reglado por inter, eh, ley internacional y también por leyes americanas. La ley internacional viene de la IMO, International Maritime Organization, eh, eh, la MAPO, Marine Pollution Prevention. La ley Nacional para los Estados Unidos es de la EPA, EPA, eh, Environmental Protection Agency. We separate, eh, nosotros separamos todo, todo, todo la, toda la basura. Se separa la comida, el papel, la plástica, el aluminio y el vidrio 
y después producimos también eh, agua gris y agua negra y esto va contenida en tanques especiales y también agua de, de eh, esto no sé cómo se dice en español, bilge, por debajo. Eh, toda esta cosa tiene su procedimiento la comida se va tratada en un pulper system y viene triturada, muy muy pequeñitos la se puede echar al agua cuando hay un shoot para mandar al agua cuando estamos afuera de las 12 millas náuticas de la baseline de, la, de los estados o si, se, se la puede desembarcar también en tierra en Miami o la se puede quemar en el incendio Todas las otras cosas las vamos a reciclar, el papel se va a reciclar, el plástico se va a reciclar, el vidrio lo vamos a reciclar, también las baterías pequeñas las vamos a reciclar, todo lo que se puede lo reciclamos, lo llevamos en Miami. ¿Está... ¿Le, le contesté? <laughs> Mucho gusto. Yeah, so I was explaining to the lady that all the waste we produce on board is uh, strictly regulated by international and national law. The international law, laws are dictated by the IMO, International Maritime Organization, through a code that is called MARPO, Marine Pollution Preventions. And the national law, in our case, that we operate in the States, is dictated by the EPA. Environmental Protection Agency. So we have to process all the waste according to the rules. Specifically for the waste, for the food waste, food waste is treated to the pulper system. Pulper system is sort of a this grinding machine where the food, the food is grinded, is comminuted in very, very, very small particle, go through a system with the water and is collected into a, a big tank. In this tank, the food is dried out the wood is squeezed, the water goes again to the circle and then uh, the dry food goes in a silos. From these silos the food, well, the comminuted and dry food can be either disposed of putting it in a bin and disposed of in Miami as a food waste or when we are out of the 12 nautical miles from the baseline of any coast we can dispose it of Etsy because it's highly biodegradable or we can send it to the incinerator and be burned. Then all the other ways that uh, we recycle as much as we can. We recycle clean paper, clean plastic, glass, aluminum cans, batteries and uh, the paper that is dirty we burn in the incinerator. And then for all the other ways like grey water and black water, also they are regulated. In general, we have to, do, to we can discharge them overboard after that they are treated because we have a treatment system for grey water and for black water when we are outside the 12 nautical miles of any baseline of any state that we go nearby. Next, do you have any question? Okay, right here. Hi, Captain. <clears throat> Hello. How much is the ship driving itself or on cruise control? Or is somebody always manually having to control the ship? So, the, we have a several way of driving the ship. Right now, when we are in, in open water, oh, I think I can show you. Presentation is still there. Yes, I have to go back. Uh, the first slide. taking a while. Oh, here we are. This is even better. Very good. 
So we can try, we can go on end steering and try from the wheel that we have here with the helmsman. That happens when uh, we are uh, docking or undocking the vessel or when we are under pilotage in the channel. That is going to be done manually. When we are at sea, we go on, uh, we, call, we still call it autopilot, but we go in a truck pilot. Truck pilot is a system that uh, can uh, drive the ship in three different ways. Truck mode, uh, a heading, uh, heading mode, heading mode that means that we set a heading and the truck pilot will just uh, keep that heading. When we go on heading mode, we have to be very careful because it keeps the heading but does not take in consideration the drift due to the wind or to the current, so we have to bear that in mind. Then, if we want to bear about uh, the, if we want to care about uh, the drift due to the wind or the current, we can select the truck pilot course mode. In that mode, the ship is going to be steered not by heading but by true course. Means now we are balancing for the wind and for the current effect. But when we are in open water and we are close to our truck, then we are going to steer in truck mode. Means that the system is totally interfaced with the axis with the electronic chart and will keep always the ship in in the truck on the truck. So we'll make all the correction either by itself because it's going to be guided by the GPS and will keep the ship always in that truck so it can change the course anytime by yourself. In this case here, this was our truck because as there was wind and current, I decided during the approach to go on end steering and go off truck because it was more convenient for me to face the current. So these are the four modes. So we can steer in end steering, truck pilot, heading, course or truck mode. Captain, does the uh, crew practice the MES? Ah, oh, the MES is uh, practiced by our crew member. All those life-saving appliances that we have on board, we have a safety officer that is responsible, well, not only, we have actually three safety officers, a safety officer, a second safety officer, and a training officer and they provide the training to all of our crew members that are appointed to handle the life-saving appliances, the three different types of lifeboats, the life raft, and the MES. Any more questions? Back there. To your left, please. I just had a question. Why is the ship registered in Malta and not the country where it's at MSC is located? Good question. <laughs> there are many, many competitors among the flag administrations. So the most common flag you will find on cruise ships they are either Panama, which I think is the number one, the most common. Malta is another very, very frequent flag. And then there is the Bahamas, Marshall Islands, and occasionally you can find uh, Italian or uh, Holland America, they have a Dutch flag. But the most common is uh, Panama, Malta and Bahamas. For a reason why is taxation. And, uh, but sometimes, not only, sometimes um, according to the area where we operate, we want to have an office of the flag administration that is available for us in case we have uh, we have some special need. So Malta is a very good flag because they have offices all over the world and they are actually very good. They are capable to provide us any support and instruction we need very, very quick. Good morning, Captain. I'm pretty sure you, check, you sail all over the world and uh, I have a question. Uh, what is your favorite destination? What do you, you like to sail? And what is your the least favorite destination? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very tough question. <laughs> I think all the world is beautiful. Depends on uh, with which eyes we look at the world. So all the world is beautiful. 
then is very subjective. Uh, personally, I love Alaska. Alaska is very, very beautiful. The scenarios there are very beautiful. The landscapes are very beautiful. There is a very beautiful nature. So I, I find it very, very attractive. But it is something personal. There are people that don't like the cold, they are not attracted by the mountains or the forests. Or, but I love Alaska. Alaska is very beautiful. And the least... Uh, no, there is not the, the, the least. No, 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 I like all of the things. Sounds like make a discrimination. <laughs> no, I like all the other ports. The other ports. Good morning. You, that to um, your answer about what to do with all the waste, you mentioned um, pet plastic and aluminum processing. Do you have your own recycling plants on board or is that offloaded at the port? No, we offload in Miami. We have uh, the company as a special agreement, no, not agreement, contract, with many, with many vendors and uh, but before accepting the contract the company make an investigation because we are responsible to make sure that the vendors to whom we deliver our because there is a lot of liability with 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 waste so before we lend our waste and we give it to a vendor we have to make uh, a, an investigation we have to make sure that this vendor has all the certification and is recognized by the american authorities only after we make sure they are certified and they are approved by the American, the American authority, we can give them our recycles or our waste. Remember in America we have Cliff Berry, we have Salvation Army, we have several vendors that they take different um, segments of our wastes. So now we disembark everything ashore, the recyclable. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have the last two questions. Good morning. Uh, how many generators are on standby and running at the same time? At the moment, we are at full speed and we have all the generators running. All of them. We are going to have only two generators when we go from St. Thomas to St. Martin because it's a very short distance and the speed is going to be slow. So we are going to have two generators on and two generators on standby. But then again, when from St. Martin we go to Nassau, it's going to be full speed, so we're going to have the four generators running. Okay, last one here, Captain. You talked about the shifts for navigators being just four hours. Why is that such a short time? Is it that stressful of a position? It is stressful, and we don't want to have uh, the officers on duty to be tired, because uh, fatigue, is one this has been proved by the study fatigue is one of the main uh, the main factor in in uh, incidents people who is under fatigue uh, tends to have uh, to pay less attention and so it's more vulnerable and more inclined to do mistake and take a wrong decision so for this reason we limit to four hours four hours on eight hours rest and then they go on again well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Uh, please give a big round of applause for the officers and the captain of the MSC Seaside person this morning with us. The master of the MSC Seaside, Robert Toliota, our hotel director, Janice, the food and beverage director, Thomas, executive chef, Hector, and the chief housekeeper, Raul. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the cruise. <laughs>